Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sensibility. Yeah. I think you know, and I keep coming back to it. You know, it 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 looks like a French clown, and I am French. You know, I think that a lot of my things go back to my ancestry, the guillotine. The guillotine is very French. I mean, you know, that's that's very synonymous with France, and my real name is Fournier. So I mean, it's uh, my you know, my ancestor was Lafayette. Uh, I come from a from a French background. Um, and I, I'm surprised every once in a while that I find my ancestry coming back into the show. I use this long sword, this rapier sword, you know, and I'm very good with it. And I didn't, you know, I don't know why, but I, you know, I, I'm very good with the, with a sword. <laughs> I never trained with it, but it feels very natural in my hands. So I think that there is uh, some bloodline, some French bloodline that runs through me that that brings that out in me. And what what are the mo the most unexpected Unexpected censorship which you've been confronted to. This is the most funny one. The, the, the silliest one of all time was Munich, Germany. It was very silly. I mean, uh, you know, we had done things where we'd decapitated mannequins, but they were mannequins, and we showed very obviously mannequins. And we would have like a pump that would squirt blood into the audience, and it was funny. I mean, the audience was laughing because it was so ridiculous. Um, and the Germans heard about this. Not all the Germans, just Munich, Bavaria. And they were very upset about this. You know, Oh, you're not going to come to Munich. And I said, okay, look, come and see the show. And then judge it. Don't just judge it on what you've heard. Come and see it. So they came and saw the show. And they went back and they said, okay, you can come to Bavaria. You know, and they didn't mind the decapitation of all this stuff. They said, no teddy bears. No teddy bears, you know. And I said, "What? What, what are you talking about?" You know. I said, "You mean the little bears?" And they said, "Yes." No teddy bears on stage. And to this day, I have no idea what they were talking about. Wow. I was going, "Okay, no teddy bears. Uh, we'll give up the teddy bears." They looked at the band and go, "What teddy bears? We don't use any teddy bears." So we went and did the show, and of course, the audience heard about this. And that night, everybody threw teddy bears on stage. Hundreds of teddy bears flying up on stage, and I was going, no, no, no. <laughs> but I still don't have any idea what they were talking about. No teddy bears. <laughs> Isn't that strange? That would be like if France said, no Pokemons on stage. And I'd go, we don't use Pokemons on stage. Well, no Pokemons. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I have a seven year old. I have a seven-year-old, and that's all I buy. Is I come home and I bring Pokemons and Pokemon, the cards and the characters, and you know. Yeah, my niece is the same. Oh, that's amazing! I watch it. I watch it on TV. I sit there and I watch it on television. <laughs> <laughs> From your beginning, uh, you grew up with kind of a uh, mainstream, mainstream culture. Yes. Yeah, and uh, has it always been part of your your music? Well, it's, I you know I think. Every kid grows up in rock and roll, grows up in their level. I, you know, the very first rock and roll I ever saw was Elvis Presley. I saw Elvis when I was this big, you know, and I was like, wow, you know. And then I saw the Beatles when I was 14 or 15 years old. And when I saw that, that's what really made me want to be in a band. And, uh, and you know, I, we started out as just being a garage band, just a, you know, playing at parties, playing at little clubs and things. And then the idea struck me that that the show should be more theatrical. There should be more more production, more, you know, I mean, I liked The Who and I liked The Rolling Stones and all these bands, but nothing was going on behind them. To me, it was like, if you're going to write a song like Welcome to My Nightmare, I think you have to give the audience the nightmare, not just play it, but you need to perform it and, and, and show them the nightmare. So what we did was we ended up taking, taking rock and roll to another level, to another level of visuals, not just audio, but visuals also. And nobody had ever done that before. So, you know, it was all brand new, brand new territory out there. And then after us, you know, after... We did it, and it was successful. Then David Bowie came along, and Kiss, and all the other bands. But I think that we were the first ones to actually make it work commercially. 
I received a letter of uh, shock rock. Well, I think that shock is dead. I don't think you can shock an audience. I really don't. I think that you can entertain an audience, and I think that you can, you can mystify an audience, which is great. And I think that, but I think that the shock part is pretty much over because you see more shocking things on television than you do on in reality in, on our stage. You see much more shock, you know, on the news than you do than what we can create. So I don't even try to shock the audience. I don't think I've done shock rock since 1980. I think it was over then, you know. And I, from then on, I was just trying to basically entertain the audience. But uh, yeah, I don't think I think shock is dead. I don't really think Marilyn Manson's shocking, you know. The videos are good. The videos are very shocking, but I, don't, I really don't think that the stage show is. Is it important for you to uh, always insist on the, the distinction between you, you and uh, Alice Cooper? Oh, absolutely, because yeah. we are so different. You know, we always have to remember that. For me, I go out shopping, I go to movies, I play golf, I do everything. I have a family, I have three kids, a wife, very happy family. Alice is, is a character. He's like Batman, he's like Dracula, he's Captain Hook. He's all of these villainous characters rolled up into one, and he has his own life his stage life, and that's the only thing, that, the only time he ever comes, he never comes off stage. When the audience is gone, he's gone. When the audience is there, he's there. So I never take him off the stage. Have you ever been afraid by, by Alice Cooper? No, I, he's, you know, to me he's, he's sort of that kind of villain that you know that's, you know, striking and everything like that, but I think that Alice is there for the fun of it. I don't think he's there for any serious reason. I don't think he's, you know, I think a good villain is somebody that can scare you but at the same time make you laugh. You know, um, every good horror movie I've ever seen will scare you and then make you laugh. You know, when you see, you know, uh, Jason, Friday the 13th, and uh, Halloween, and Nightmare on Elm Street, you go, and then you, then you laugh, because I think you're laughing because you're scared of nothing. You're scared of silliness, you know. Uh, to me, that, but I think that Alice should scare you and make you laugh at the same time. <laughs>